Hey ladies. Hey. Good. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, we uh, are recording this a little bit, um, in all honesty, a little bit later in the evening. Um, we just finished the women's group here um, that meets in person. Um, we had a really good good evening. It was a little um, a little bit more intimate than we sometimes get to do, which was actually pretty nice. Yeah. And, um, and so Abby, while you're watching this, should be on a plane or getting really close to getting on a plane. I will be, no, I'll be in Colorado at this point. She will be there. She will have already landed yeah. so we're um we are praying um expectant of safe travels for for the the babster here and uh and for a good time just resting and refocused on him so that's a tangent thanks sis you're welcome yeah welcome um <laughs> so we're going to jump right into it so um tonight we talked about two big things last time we talked about our passion and our focus and tonight we talked about our identity and our family. Mm -hmm. I think those two we could have split up very easily because both of them are pretty big, big areas specifically for women that the enemy attacks on. And so let's just read the first part with our identity. Let's start there. I'm um, remembering who we are. So it says, if I were your enemy, I devalue your strength and magnify your insecurities until they dominate how you see yourself, disabling and disarming you from fighting back, from being free, from being God, from being, excuse me, from being who God has created you to be. And I'd work hard to ensure that you never realize what God has given you so you'll doubt the power of God within you. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. So the first thing we asked a lot of the women, like when you look in the mirror at yourself, what do you see? Um, what do you see, Abby, when you look at yourself in the mirror? Well, I probably, not probably, I definitely tend to focus on negativity. Mm -hmm. um, I think as women a lot, we just kind of naturally do that because we like to compare and we put ourselves up against standards that are insanely high, or we just don't have um, the correct sense of self-worth um, that we need to have. And so when I look in the mirror, I tend to see the flaws and not any of, of the good. So true. I think we all do that. I mean, mm -hmm. that that question was intentional <laughs> to go there. <laughs> um, I didn't, uh, when I wrote that, I, I knew for me, that's the same thing I do. I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, you know, or I'll look at a picture and be like, why? Like, what? Anyway, so we always go straight to what's wrong with us. Um, and and we talked about this, um, and I might say it again in a little bit, so I apologize if I do, but we have little women that we're raising looking at that. And so, um, you know, I, I have a daughter and I, I don't, she's beautiful. I, I, and not just physically, but just her heart and and her love for others and, and her care. And, and I don't want her to start looking in the mirror and thinking, well, like, ah, oh, I don't like that, like starting to nitpick everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so just recognizing that, you know, recognizing that, that God has, has made us perfectly in his image. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard for us women to do that for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of on the, on the flip side of that, we're going to come back to this because we actually talked about it in the group tonight. You know, but do you ever wish sometimes, um, looking in the mirror, you wished you were somebody else or looked like so-and-so or, um, your life would look better if only this would happen or, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it looked more like so-and-so or, mm -hmm. you know, comparison, um, and, and how often do we do that? I mean, I, that came up in group tonight, um, just, I mean, comparison's the thief of joy, mm -hmm. literally, and, um, you know, and, and I brought up, you know, the fact of, you know, there's just been this bigger movement or bigger awareness, I think, of, of women of, of women celebrating um, joys and accomplishments of fellow women, mm -hmm. of not looking at it as something coming away from you, of, of making you less or mm -hmm. competing against each other. But why can't we just genuinely celebrate and cheer each other on mm -hmm. um, and it's that comparison mm -hmm. that thing it's the comparison and greed and the jealousy part of things um, that so unfortunately in this world can can um, naturally come about mm -hmm. and so we have to supernaturally come over that 
um, and genuinely start learning to care for each other. Mm -hmm. How how different? I mean, I said this. How different would our relationships look with other women? How different would the world look? How different would the church look if we, you know, would be able to fully celebrate each other for for what we each uniquely and individually are doing and where we are in our lives, and not just that, but be grateful and content with what the Lord has given us in our own life. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole nother subject, a whole nother topic. I think but. we're at our healthiest when we can truly celebrate other people mm. without one without one ounce of envy or one ounce of um, selfish ambition or one ounce of comparison. When when you can look, when I can look at Melissa and say, sis, way to go. Like, I'm proud yeah. of you. I'm proud for you. And mean it with my whole heart with not one ounce of self, you know, self-serving. I think that's when... It's a litmus test for how healthy we are in our spirit. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, and 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 it unfortunately creeps in because the enemy knows what he's doing, yeah. you know. And so, and sometimes it's harder. I know, just f from our flesh, to be genuinely um, that encourager, or being happy when it's something you want as well, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but to get to a point where you're secure in in who created you and what he's created you to be. Mm -hmm. um, and just following the path that he's given you because it's not going to look like anybody else's. I'm like, yeah, yep. it's just the healthiest we can be. Yep. Good stuff. So we asked um, the women tonight to go to Ephesians 1, um, just Ephesians chapter 1. And the first 14 verses are a really good depiction of just a small sample of what the Lord um, has, has told us about ourselves. Um, it says that we're equipped through Christ with every spiritual blessing um, from above, we're chosen in Him. Um, we're regarded as holy and blameless before Him. We're redeemed and forgiven. We're actually lavished with grace. Mm -hmm. um, we are uh, recipients of a glorious inheritance in heaven. Um, and, it, and there's a lot more with that. But um, and please read. Excuse me. Please read Ephesians one um, if you can, because um, there's so many. And like I said, it's just a small tidbit. But there's so many things of of, of in His Word of of who we are and what. He says that we are, um, and what we've been given, we have a written proof of what God has done for us already, what he's created us to be, what he's called us to be, what he's empowered us to be. That's a big one. It's mm -hmm. becoming, but honestly, only through prayer, and she says this in the book, but only through prayer can we engage and we can access the things that we've already been given, right. the blessings that we've already been given, mm -hmm. um, the empowerment that we've already been given. Only through prayer can those be activated. We talked mm -hmm. about that with the the Armor of God series that, you know, only the, and you can put all of the pieces of God's equipment on, but mm -hmm. only by prayer are they activated. It's yeah. the same thing because part of the, the armor of God, she talks about is the belt of truth, which using Ephesians one is truth of what God has said. We didn't talk about this a lot tonight, but the Lord did lay it on my heart. We, we don't even forget the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. I mean, our salvation was nailed to a cross years ago through the, the, the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ. But our salvation also includes that that um, refining, becoming more like Him. That's a daily refinement, mm -hmm. a daily um, just um, chiseling, mm -hmm. honestly, to, to make us more like His image. And so not forgetting that part of salvation, and that part is our uh, identity. Mm -hmm. That's that's what, you know, what He's creating us to be. And yeah. so we don't need to forget that <clears throat> at all. Yeah, and she put on our questions uh, that we talked about in the group, Write those down if you need to. Put them, I mean, we talk about prayer cards on your mirror or whatever, but write those down. And I've seen a million people, you know, put them on an expo marker on their mirror and just write those promises. And like we've talked about before, that's not selfish and that's not boasting and that's not prideful. That's truth from Scripture mm -hmm. um, that we all need to cling to. So good. It's so good. <laughs> um, we asked, I, I challenge you guys this. Um, I, and I will say this, identity, there's a lot in identity. This is not something, I mean, we could do a full Bible study on identity. Mm -hmm. We might in the future, who knows? <laughs> if the Lord leads, we might do it. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to skim over it very quickly, but I also um, want to, I want to give you guys the opportunity to really just kind of dig into, into what the Lord is telling you in regards to your identity mm -hmm. because honestly everybody's identity is different mm -hmm. um, I mean the truth of foundations are there but our unique differences 
should be unique differences. Mm-hmm. My identity is not going to look the same as Abby's identity. We're sisters by, you know, through the blood of Jesus Christ, but no sisters, even with twins, mm-hmm. there's, there's differences in that and we should celebrate that. And mm-hmm. so, um, that's where I'm not going to be able to look at you and say, this is your identity. I know whose you are, but what he's empowered you to become is between you and the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so, um, just know that when we go into this, but you know, pray, pray for the Lord to make your identity fully evident mm-hmm. in your life. Um, start with these foundational truths of who, of who we are in Christ. Um, you know, that we're adopted sons and daughters. That's always a beautiful one for mm-hmm. me. Um, that we're heirs with Christ, um, that we're unconditionally loved mm-hmm. by our father, you know, that we were created in his image. That alone, knowing that we're created in his image, should tell us that we have been made perfect um, and that we've been made exactly the way the Lord has wanted us to, to be and made us to be, to bring him the most honor and glory. And yeah. so um, that one we could stop at alone <laughs> right there. But also with that one, Abby has also been created in his image. So the difference is in Abby and I, I shouldn't look at that as a threat or should look at that again as a comparison, but no, that's just another beautiful picture of the father Mm -hmm. and how diverse he is that he's created all of, all of us to look like him. How vast is he? I mean, that's just Mm -hmm. a beautiful picture of his creation Mm -hmm. being displayed throughout the world. And so when you look at it that way, it's just, I don't know, for me, it's a lot easier to celebrate with each other. Like, God, that's so good. You know, I like that. Um, if you've never recognized the enemy's foothold in your identity before, pull back the curtain, sisters. We love you, but pull it back. Um, because he is meant, I mean, it's just like it said in the front. He um, he wants us to never realize what God's given us, so we'll doubt the power of God within us. Mm. You know, how often, there was there was a sweet sister, Wanda's with you guys tonight, and um, she and I were talking, and she said, you know, how often do we think, Oh God, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no way. Why don't you ask blah 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 to do it better? There's no way you want me to do that. Um, and we just doubt what is within us and what God is, ha- has destined for us to do. Mm-hmm. Um, if He's put it on your heart, sisters, He wants you to do it. Um, and so I, I just thought that was really, really good. You were made for a God-sized dream. I read a book that was titled that one time. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> That's so good. Um, We need to stop living those lies, God. We just Mm -hmm. need to stop living them. Um, The good thing I like this about Paul, when Paul was fervently praying for those first century believers, he said um, he wasn't asking, this is Paul, Paul wasn't asking God to make sure the early believers received certain things. They already had them. Um, He was just praying that they'd realize they'd already had them. Mm -hmm. It's not a shopping list. It's a packing list. Mm. Um, I love that. That's so good. I love that. I love that. And we've got to remember that. Um, So with identity, one of my favorite, we talked about this, one of my favorite um, parts of the passages of the Bible is in 2 Kings, 2 2 Kings 6, where um, Elisha is um, there surrounded pretty much by the, by the enemy. And, um, one of his, um, one of the prophet's attendants, one of Elisha's attendants went out of the tent and saw the enemy literally prepared to attack them, um, completely surrounded them. Um, so of course I would think the same way, um, freaked out, (laughs) ran into the tent, told Elisha what's going on. Elisha's as cool as a cucumber. And the attendant's like, why are you so calm? Like, we literally are about to be killed. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you so calm with this? And Elisha said not to worry because those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And even when um, the, the attendant was still just so worried about it, his next prayer to the father was, Oh Lord, I pray open his eyes that he may see. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Um, And so when the servant turned back and looked at the army behind the army, he saw the armies from the Lord and saw the the angels that were prepared to protect them and prepared to win that battle for them. And so, um, I, I loved that. And I love that picture just in our lives as well. I love what she said. She said, um, 
difficulties and imperfections can discourage us so desperately, the ones that the devil wants to present as the sum total of our reality are actually only a part mm -hmm. of the battlefield. No matter what's against you, remember this, it's no match for the power and the authority he's given you access to. There may be armies standing against you, but they're only waiting to become an unwitting witness to the overcoming power of God and the overriding ocean of his grace. It's so good. It's just, anyway, this was written so beautifully. We can't remember whose we are and we can't remember what is within us to overcome anything that comes our way. And we talked about the song, um, or I talked about the song, um, you know, the God of angel armies, you know, um, I know who goes before me. I know who, you know, stands behind. And I just love that because that brings me back to this passage every time of knowing, you know, I'm not alone mm -hmm. and no matter what's before me, um, the Lord is going to be there, not just to fight the battle, but be victorious in that battle. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just pray that all of our eyes are just open to see the beautiful creation that you and I are, yeah. that he has made, um, what he's destined for us, what he's empowered and equipped us to do so the enemy does not steal that from us and try to destroy that in a way that makes us feel ill-equipped, unprepared, mm -hmm. um, not good enough to do certain things, mm -hmm. and definitely not to a point where we need to compare to feel like we're we're worthy of something. Mm -hmm. I just don't like that, um, guys, because um, you know it says that that we're his and he's ours, yeah. and I love that. I just I, I love that. Yeah. Hey, ladies, uh, we're back. I don't know what to we say. We never left, and then the edit, we're, they're never gonna know. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Okay, here we go. We're here. Okay, guys. So um, let's continue and talk about strategy four, which is family, your family. Um, and so it says, if I were your enemy, I'd seek to disintegrate your family and destroy every member of it. I'd want to tear away at your trust and unity and turn everyone's love inward on themselves. I would make sure your family didn't look anything like it's supposed to because then people would look at your Christian marriage, your Christian kids... And so you're no different, no stronger than anybody else. That God underneath it all really doesn't change anything. Mm. Um, mm. Not today, enemy. Not today. So, <laughs> guys, we we asked, you know, what do you what do you think marriage and family was created to be? What were, what was their purpose? We had some people at our table say that it was meant to a test your patience, which was funny, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but. It was meant to point you closer to Jesus and, and meant to be a representation of Christ's love on the earth. There are a couple of things that our table talked about, and I'm sure there are tons that the other ladies talked about. But Yeah, I, we've, I've done a study um, before that talks about how like marriage marriage's intention and purpose was never to make us happy. Mm -hmm. It was to make us holy. Mm -hmm. um, I personally would rather be happy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I would rather be holy. I'm just it's, messing. It's more, it's more uh, convenient. To I, be I'm happy. just messing with you guys. Um, but in in fairness, I mean, our our marriages, our families are meant to um, sanctify us, um, and they should be a really good representation of uh, of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Our marriages mm -hmm. should not look like the world's. Um, our families should not look like the world's, and so that's a challenge in itself. Um, with just today and, and what we're living in. And, um, and so that, that's just a big thing. So, um, I mean, we encourage you women and this is not just do not tune out. This is not just for married women, people Look, that have hello. kids. There specifically is some single lady <laughs> stuff that we're going to talk about. Um, but, um, if you haven't sat down with your spouse and had a moment of, okay, what, what is our family's purpose? Mm -hmm. You know, wh what do we want our family to be? What What is our marriage supposed to be? If you haven't ever really had those conversations, I encourage you women to do that. Um, because I think being unified, and this is something we talk about in here, that unity, um, being a unified group, um, is huge because I and mean, we talk about this as much as God loves unity, the enemy loves division. Um, when we started mm -hmm. talking about family tonight, we didn't just stick to the marriage children family, which is the most important. Don't misunderstand me. That's your first line of ministry period. 
Um, and if you get it out of whack, everything will be out of whack. Mm. But <clears throat> we didn't just stop at that family. We, we talked about work family. We talked about extended family. We talked about um, church family. Um, so as much as God loves unity, the enemy loves division. And so when you're a part of a family that wants and yearns to honor and glorify God, the enemy is going to come and punch it. I mean, it's going to try to destroy it, bottom line. Um, and I, I loved the fact that, you know, that if I were your enemy, I would, um, I would turn everyone's love inward on themselves. Mm -hmm. We could talk about that forever, about the, the selfishness, um, and most of the time how selfishness is what leads to division. Um, but that's, anyway, that's another day. But we talked about families. And so, um, you know, we, we talked about, you know, when's the last time you brought your family to the Lord and fervently prayed for them? Um, did you notice that you were praying for stirred change up in you as well? So many times, um, we have a tendency and we kind of joke, like we'll go to the Lord and be like, Lord, please help him understand this or please <laughs> change him. You know, like I, it's all you, Lord, I can't do it. You know, um, when so often when those things happen, the Lord comes to you and says, okay, Melissa, mm -hmm. this is where you need to work. Mm -hmm. But this is where you need to step back and think, okay, what can I do to be different? Mm -hmm. And that's where that selfishness has to go away. Um, and selflessness and mm -hmm. being a servant for him needs to come into play. Well, not even that, like, well, that plus a, a few years ago, I think when I was in high school, somebody, um, wiser than I, uh, told me that when you have a conflict with someone or there's someone in your life that you don't like or that you're, you know, struggling with or whatever, if you pray about them, um, about the problem and for them, it changes your perspective towards them. Mm. And so all of a sudden, because of the Holy Spirit, you realize my battle is not against flesh and blood, as we talked about mm -hmm. with the Armor of God series. And just imagine what it does for your perspective on that person. Even though, of course, if you're having a conflict with someone and you're mad at them, you're not going to want to pray for them. That's not our default as human beings because we're sinful and we're mm -hmm. selfish. Um, but when you pray for someone that you're having conflict with, it changes your perspective on them and it just kind of lightens your spirit and it's it's an outward act of just placing it in God's hands where it rightfully belongs anyway. Mm -hmm. It's so good. And so, I mean, we ask the women to, you know, in your home, in your marriage with your kids, if you are feeling just exhausted, if you're feeling joyless or hopeless or um, angry, um, cynical, um, indifferent, you know, if the if these are some feelings that you're having, then you need to get on your knees um, and pull back the curtain and realize who's making you feel that way. Because, like you said, people are not our problem. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I just I, I just pray for you, ladies that are watching this, that um, you realize the enemy is a roaring lion, and he is devouring our families devour, I mean, destroying families. Um, it's happening every day. It's very sad. I mean, it, it, it makes me angry. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and seeing that happen, experiencing things, I mean, being parts of situations where I've seen the enemy try to destroy things like, mm -hmm. um, it, it should, something within you should really um, just get fired up about it. I mean, mm -hmm. and just be like, not today, mm -hmm. not today. We were talking about this. Who who was talking about this? Who said something? Our boom. Oh, Sienna. Shout Sienna. out. It's, it's light, Sienna. Yeah, we're having a minute. We are fading. Um, but Sienna just straight up rocked it tonight <laughs> and yes, said... You know, she just straight up said, and I agreed because I've had the same prayer on her knees. You're not going to take my family. Mm -hmm. If you want to fight, let's fight because mm -hmm. you're not going to win, but you're not going to take away my family. Yeah. And you, some of us ladies, I love y'all. You've got to get mad, <laughs> like a holy <laughs> anger mm -hmm. and, and, and get, and get ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Regardless if you want to fight or not, you're in a war. Mm -hmm. And, and like you said, it's not against flesh and blood. Um, but you are fighting against rulers of the darkness to, to a point where you're going to have to get on your knees mm -hmm. and you're going to have to say, if you want to fight, let's go. Yeah. 
because I know who's on my side and I know who wins. But if you want to go there, let me get my dad involved and let's <laughs> let's have this out. Um, and you kind of, you have to just get, just point blank with them. And she rocked it. I mean, she was talking about praying specifically for certain people, uh, you know, in her family. Um, and they were coming to her this last month, like, you're not going to believe this. This is easy. And she kept saying, boom, God, because I prayed for it. Boom, God. And we loved it. I don't yeah. know why I loved it so it's much, great. but I loved it. Boom, God. Boom, God. And so uh, pray specifically and strategically. Um, Miss Zena has, has done some beautiful things specifically as far as praying in her with her kids. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, there's so many, and, and our kids, they all are different, that you shouldn't just pray, Lord, protect my kids. You know, I mean, she even says in the book that one of her kids, you know, Priscilla, one of her kids really struggles with anxiety. So she prays specifically for that to not subside in her child's life, you mm -hmm. know, for, for that child to feel the Lord and to not have those anxious thoughts and know that that spirit is not from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to get more strategic and specific with our prayers, not just with our kids, but our spouses. For our, for the single ladies, begin to start praying for that future spouse, that they'll be set on fire for Christ, that they have good influences in their life at this point. Because, you know, I, I, being single, there's so many, I mean, friends are, my friends still are very important, but um, you want those good influences. You need to pray and, pre and start preparing your heart as well for those things as well. Um, you know, that pray that his passions are aligned with authentic faith. Um, these are prayers that just are so vital and, and can make such a huge difference in how the Lord um, shows up and shows off in, in your life. And so um, she just came at it. She said, family is where I get my, that's just my passion. And I just, I'm not going to let the enemy take it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I just, anyway. I, it fired me up. I'm not going to lie. I love it. Boom. God. Boom. Thank you, lady. Mm -hmm. That made my night. That was great. Um, and so we talked about family. Like maybe your immediate family is great. You know, maybe your marriage is great. Your kids are great. Everybody's doing really good. What about your extended family? You know, what about that? And um, we kind of laughed and we said, we all have that person. <laughs> you know, we all have that one that we struggle with. You know, that... Um, and we all do. We all have, you know, um, some of them laughed and was like, does it have to be just one? I was like, no. I mean, I get it. But, <laughs> you know, we and holidays are coming up. Anyway, mm. I don't think that's coincidental, by the way, you know, but um, but we have those people in our lives that really struggle with. It might not be blood related. What if it's somebody in your church family? Mm. What if it's that person that you just struggle with? Mm. Um, what if it's at work um, or your work family? You know, what if it's at school? Um, it could be so many, so many different places, but... Um, you know, when's the last time you prayed for them? Mm -hmm. when, and, I, and I don't just say like, Lord, please don't, you know, I was laughing a little bit like, don't let me kill him, Lord. Like, please just <laughs> let me get through this, you know. But, um, you know, are we praying for unity mm -hmm. amongst those people that are the most difficult in our life? Yeah. And can, I, I mean, this, I don't know why I feel just led to ask you guys, when's the last time that you have prayed for unity within our church body? Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like a lot of times we don't see each other as family. I mean, I think Shannon Oaks is one of the most welcoming, warm, mm -hmm. friendly churches in the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, but isn't that probably the place where the enemy wants to rule and reign the most is, mm -hmm. is in relationships. And so I just feel, you know, led to ask you guys, pray for, pray for unity in our church family. Pray for unity with that person that you might've had bad blood with, you know, in the past or, you know, pray for the new um, elders, that they would unite uh, to lead this charge in our church. I, I think that that's something that's so powerful and that God intended because he writes about the body of Christ so often and so beautifully as we talked about before, not competing against each other, not working mm -hmm. against each other, but working uniquely and wonderfully and beautifully together piece by piece to create this body of Christ. And without the body working unified, um, it doesn't work the way that it was designed to work. And so mm -hmm. not to go on a tangent, but when's the last time you prayed for unity in our church body? That's so good. Well, and we talked about it tonight. Like, and we were talking about families. Like, um, it's, oh man, y'all, it's so important. Why would the enemy not attack that? I mean, that's exactly what we mm -hmm. talked about tonight. Like, um, you know, if our families are supposed to be a representation of Christ to the world, that's where the enemy's going to attack first. Mm -hmm. That's what the enemy's going to destroy. He's going to destroy homes. 
and he's going to destroy churches Mm -hmm. and, and pull the curtain back, um, and stop looking at what you can get out of it and how, what's happening to you. Like pull the curtain back. It's people are not our problem. And so often we put people and associate it with the the issue Mm -hmm. and not realize like we've just got to get on our knees and just say, God, like unify us. And, and what will happen most of the time, I mean, I'm not God, so he can do whatever he wants to do. (laughs) But most of the time, the way God works with that is he starts putting a stirring within yourself from his, from his Holy Spirit of what you need to do mm-hmm. to to be sanctified, to help in that unity. That might mean you get a stirring like, hey, I need to text so-and-so, tell them they did a good job. Or I need to encourage so-and-so. Those are not coincidences. That is the Lord's way of of intertwining all of us to mm-hmm. become more of a unified body mm-hmm. through love and grace. It's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. So good. Um, guys, we, we talked about this. Um, you know, our, our influence on the world to be representations of Christ is through our families. And so um, there was a lot of scripture that uh, Priscilla put in the back of the book. It's on pages 86 through 91. And some are about kids. Some are about marriage. Um, so I'm just sure about our, you know, being gentle with our words, um, you know, making sure our words are full of love and and grace. And, um, I think those are really important to read, but we, we finished with the charge in regards to families, um, with each person about using, you know, I, I did it on my piece of paper. I'm not going to show all names, but I did it right there. Mm -hmm. But, um, using that or using these perforated cards in the back, um, and, let the spirit lead you of a, of a name. Um, it could be several, but of, you know, of, of someone, whether it be in your immediate family, extended family, church family, work family, let the Lord prompt you as far as names are concerned of people that you struggle with. Um, that, and you know, those people that you struggle with, um, and write their name down and be diligent and fervent Mm -hmm. about praying for them and not just, you know, Lord, please help us, but being specific in your prayers, um, for the next, the next month. Mm -hmm. Um, I am expectant and I prayed this over the women that were here tonight. I am expectant of hearing nothing but some boom God (laughs) moments this next month of how the Lord has beautifully and only his way been able to restore Mm -hmm. relationships where there's been division for such a long time, um, has been able to unify people where there hasn't been unity. I'm expectant of that, Mm -hmm. um, because my goal is to pray intentionally for that, Mm -hmm. um, for not just my immediate and extended family, but my church family as well. Um, kind of how, how Abby was talking about earlier. And so, um, it starts with us on our knees, Mm y'all. It really does. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I just pray that you put those names, name or names, um, somewhere where you can see them and see where you can see those prayers, um, and just do and be obedient to where the Holy Spirit leads you. Um, because however he leads you as small as it may seem, is very intentional mm-hmm. in his purpose and his plan. Yeah. Um, but guys, you're going to have to fight hard and you're going to have to get to the point where you look the enemy pretty much squarely in the eye and say, you're not taking it. Mm-hmm. You're, you're just not, you're not going to take it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not an easy fight. Um, and you don't have to do it on your own. Um, and praise the Lord for that because <laughs> we would not win. Mm-hmm. Um, that you're going to have to be, um, you're going to have to get, I hate to say get mad, but you're going to have to have that holy anger, um, of you're just enough's enough. Um, and we've got to get to that point in every aspect of our life where a family's concerned and mm-hmm. enough's enough. Mm-hmm. Like you're not doing this. This mm-hmm. just stops today. We're done. <laughs> it, it, we're just, we're not going to let you take it. Um, and being like, we just don't have the time to be lackadaisical about it. We just don't. 
um, a sweet sister of ours, Zena, said it. She's like, you don't know how much time you have. Mm -hmm. And y'all, if you've never heard her story, mm -hmm. it's hers to tell. But if she's saying it through through her story, you, you just, I mean, that was just, anyway, mm -hmm. that was a God thing tonight. Mm -hmm. And so for me, we, we don't have the time to be complacent with our families. We just don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, please write those names down. Um, we'd love in the in the next month to hear about those. Yeah. Um, we would love to see you guys, if possible, in person. We know if you can't come, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But on Tuesday, December the 8th, we are going to have our Christmas party at Tanya Bradford's home. Um, I heard she has some Santas. I heard that just, maybe just, just a, a couple Santa Clauses. That's a joke. She has a lot of them. It's actually pretty crazy. It's fantastic. It's awesome, yeah. Um, we always have a good time. Uh Bring a gift if you can. Um, no more than $25, but bring a gift. Uh, it gets a little Mary competitive. Mary will steal from you. <laughs> Just FYI, she cradled a doll last year for like an hour and then got it stolen by a child. Fun story. You might experience something like that if you come. You just never know. <laughs> um, I forgot about that, but that did that happen. Was incredible. That did happen. Um, but yeah, bring a gift. Um, and... Uh, bring a little finger food to eat if possible we're going to try to be as um as careful as we can uh with those types of things but we'd love to see you guys there mm -hmm. um if you don't know how to get there we're going to be sending out an email um in the next next couple weeks probably a bit closer to the eighth of of possible carpool and how to get there but it'll yeah. be at six o'clock mm -hmm. on december the eighth that is a tuesday um and then we'll come back in January to keep going with this book. So I, I just don't think it's coincidental that we're stopping on identity and family and having two full months to kind mm -hmm. of process that because with holidays coming and um, being around a lot of families and, and not just family, but church family. I mean, but there's just a lot to process in that that um, I feel like the Lord wants us to linger on that. Lots so, of opportunities to be patient. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And just just bring them, you know, to the Lord in prayer, mm -hmm. specific things. I mean, there was one specifically in mind that just says, Lord, restore that relationship. Like, you, let me receive love the way that it's being shown to me mm -hmm. and not be upset when it's not being shown to me in a way that I think it should be. Mm -hmm. Like, let me, that's part of the unity part. Like, let me start learning how to receive love in a way that they're showing and be appreciative and thankful for that. Boom, um, God. And so, boom, God. And so, <laughs> Ooh, girl. Um, that was part of mine is restoring. Another one was, you know, Lord, just set their heart on fire for you. Mm -hmm. Like, let them remember who, you know, who they are and who has them and um, set their heart on fire so they will set their family's heart on fire, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and I and I fully expect the Holy Spirit at, at some point to prompt me to do certain things or to act a certain way or to refrain a certain time. And as far as cynicism and, and doubt and just allow his love and grace to shine through. Mm -hmm. And so I pray that for each of you guys as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go. I was just going to say, you guys are loved. And uh, if there's anything that we could ever pray for you with or for... We would love to do that. Um, but until next time, see you at the Christmas party. Wanda, you're the bomb. Thank you so much for doing this. Love you. We love you. There's my heart. So <laughs> much. My heart overflows oh. for how much I love Wanda. Um, and yeah, guys, just just take time. I know it seems like we're really busy all the time, mm -hmm. um, but time spent in prayer is the most well-spent time that we can spend. And so... Um, pray for those people in your life that are difficult because we all have them. Bless them. Bless them. Really bless them. Bless them. And usually those are the people the Lord are using to refine you. 100%. I mean, it just is. I, it's easier said than done. I get it, guys. Um, and we're probably more honest because <laughs> we're a little bit more tired. It's but almost it, 10. That's okay. But um, it's so true. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, and so, you know, we've been talking about writing down your prayers. I think these tonight... Um, they're all important. Don't misunderstand me. But putting specific names to things, mm -hmm. um, and 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 writing down, you know, the the Ephesians one of your identity. Like these are things that you really need to chew on for a while. Um, don't just skim through it, and don't just um, 
be lazy motions. about. Yeah, don't go through the motions. Don't be complacent and say, oh, we're good because um, we've all been there and that's right. Anyway, mm-hmm. any hits. You've mm-hmm. got to still be on um, on the def- I mean, you've just got to be ready. you just got to mm-hmm. be prepared. Um, and so we love you guys very we much. We love you guys. And remember, boom. God. Later. <laughs> it's been a clock. <laughs>